What's up guys, my name is Lex Veltes and welcome to another episode of Lex Reflects. Today we're going to be looking at one of the proudest moments in my entire poker career. It's High Stakes Poker 2009. The stakes were 400, 800 and this is my second session on High Stakes Poker. I'd just taken the seat of Mike Matisau. He was up a bunch of money but was really sitting on his stack. Now I leaked to the producer, Mori Escondani, that I was waiting in the wings and he actually told the table. They advised Mike Mattis how to get out of the game, that it was fine to leave with a profit because they wanted some action in there. Of course, my image was super aggressive, as people also saw from the first session, and that's how we got to this point. Now, you might know this, that we're actually playing 500-1000. And this is because when I got to the game, Maury told me that I would only have a couple of hours to play. He said he had everything that he needed for TV, these, hand would not, these hands would not be broadcasted, but because I generated so much action in the other episodes, he wanted to give me a chance to win my money back. This was amazing, I had wait, been waiting in the green room for this all day, so I got to the table knowing I only had a couple hours to play. So I asked the table, do you guys want to play higher? Uh, which resulted in the table agreeing to play 500-1000. Doyle actually had a straddle out uh, playing 400-800, and when the game got bumped up, he took his straddle back. I commented on it saying I thought you were a gambler and then Doyle said I didn't know this was a staked game. So we had a little banter back and forth and uh, I think that's also going to be important in his next hand. In his hand you see me with nine deuce of spades in the straddle and generally you don't want to be raising um, suited hands from the big blind because if the small blind limb raises you fold a lot of equity and that's a disaster. However, I think that jo Doyle's going to play his hands from small blind relatively honestly meaning that he's just going to raise when he has a good hand and he's not going to trap me enough. Uh, if he does trap, he probably has a really strong hand, but Doyle is not going to limb raise me with a hand like king six offsuit or something. Knowing that, I actually like the fact uh, to mix in nine deuce suited, especially looking back on it. I'm very critical of my play very often, as you guys see in these videos, but uh, this is something that I nat did naturally very well to pick hands like this. To make raises with and I'm actually kind of proud of that because that is really supported by modern day theory. You know it's good to point out the positives uh, after also pointing out the the bad stuff. So looking back on it I really like this hand and um, I really like the raise. Just a little gift for you son. Yeah I want to find you, out too. But... You give him five thousand I'm sure I'll tell you. Five and he'll swear too. Five thousand will yeah. work. Okay so we see a quick action on the flop, dual checks, I instantly check behind. Um, this is something that you saw in some of my other hands as well. Uh, when my hand gets a little bit more marginal, I really like to sort of abuse my uh, aggressive image and go for a check. This is uh, making me a lot of money on future streets because people just don't think that I have anything. Because if I, if I did, I would have just bet. Um, on this board, um, it's actually really good to check a lot of deuces and threes behind because you don't want to get check raised off your hand. Also, it's a little bit easier to get the showdown this way. Now. I could have made a small bet against an honest range with somebody who doesn't check raise much like Doyle. It's probably really good to put in a small bet to make sure that somebody doesn't really realize their equity. In this case, that means that Doyle can hit an easy queen or a seven. But small bets weren't really a thing back then. It was either beg, bet big or check. And I definitely like the checking option better than I do a big bet. Lex flopped a pair of deuces. Doyle says, hey, I'm still stuck. All right, the turn is a jack and now things get really interesting. I think that Doyle is really sort of capped in this situation. Cap means that he doesn't have a whole bunch of insanely strong hands. I mean, let's think about it, right? He bets full pot here, so we can immediately discount him having a six, a three, or a deuce. There's absolutely zero reason to bet uh, this large with a hand like king three, queen three, or even a hand like six, seven. So Doyle's pretty much saying, I have a jack or a stronger. But that's really hard to have, because if he has a strong jack, he would have raised preflop. I think he would have uh, raised preflop with sixes and jacks as well. Deuces, there's only one combo because I have a deuce in my hand. And uh, a, pair, a pocket pair of threes is definitely possible. But think about all the bluffs that he can have or, or all the weaker hands that he can have uh, that, that are going to take a stab at it. Especially playing again uh, into uh, what is my aggressive image that would have bet the flop with good hands. So Doyle's bet here, I'm just never folding to. I wouldn't even fold it if Doyle's perfectly balanced in that sense. I wouldn't even fold to this bet after having checked the flop behind. So the turn is not really a decision, but I think it's a very important fact to remember on the river that I don't think that he has a six, a three, uh, or a deuce very often, or any of those sets either. So at this point, the only thing that I'm truly worried about is him having uh, a pair of jacks at some point. Of course, he can have five for suited for sure, but... And Lex says, <laughs> maybe he's trying to pick up this little pot here. We're just going to have to take that on the chin if he does. 
I got ducks. I don't, don't want to. Oh, Let me call and see what happens. Wow, four comes out there. You bet Two, three, four, six. This card changes so much, and not because somebody can make a straight. It should just change the betting a lot. This is just not a card that Duel is going to be super happy about. Let's say you have a Jack Nine. Is this really the river that you want to bet pot on? Is this really the river that you want to polarize yourself on? On top of that, I think that it's pretty safe to say that Doyle is not going to turn a, a pair that's higher than mine, but also pretty bad into a bluff. So I don't think that he's going to bet a hand like 6-7 or King-3 or Queen-3 um, on the river, plus we discounted most of those uh, with his turn sizing. So if you think about it, there's actually not that many strong hands that Doyle can bet. Sure, they can, he can have 4-5, but even if you think about the sets, it's really hard because I don't think that he's going to bet a pair of forces big on a turn, pair of fives is big on a turn and also i don't think that he's gonna uh, value bet the jack for this sizing obviously it's still a pretty dangerous river and i think that Doyle's lacking on the straights as well because i made it five and a half big blinds before the flop so i don't think that hands like king five uh, uh jack five queen five offsuit uh, any of those hands are in there so if you think about it doyle actually doesn't have that many big bets from a career point of view, this hand is definitely one of the key hands for me. So I talked about uh, during the Ivy hands that you can also find on this channel. I talked about having sold action and I didn't really want to have to explain uh, losing a uh, 400k pot uh, with King Jack preflop. Now, this hand is a very similar situation and you have to understand the scrutiny is very high. You're not playing in a local casino where you can muck your hand. The whole world watches with you and you're definitely aware of the pressure with the camera team around it. And also, these were the highest stakes that I had played up until that time. I mean, we're playing 500, 1,000, 2,000, and I'm about to call a, a pot bet with a pair of deuces. Um, obviously, I was still selling action for this season of high stakes poker, but after the Ivy hand, I thought I cannot let that influence my decisions anymore. Um, and I actually talked about the people that bought action uh, about what was going through my head in that King Jack of Diamonds hand. They also said, you just, we just trust the way you play, so you just have to play your, your own way. Um, this was all going through my head during uh, the first few seconds that I was thinking about this hand, um, but then eventually I just thought to myself, okay, I just need to think about the poker logically, and then I came to all the, the conclusions uh, that I just talked about. Doyle is not giving up. Oh, he's on. representing a five. Same Gabe says it, he's representing a five, but it's so hard for him to have one. It looks like Lex is seriously thinking about calling with a pair of deuces. There it is. He calls. What a call. Wow. He called with the ducks. Do a bit 60 on the river. Don't bluff the guy in red. David, don't bluff the guy in red. True story. I love those two lines. Don't bluff the guy in red. He called with the ducks. People mention those so often to me uh, when I talk about this hand. So, this hand did a lot for me emotionally. This hand was a really big moment in my career. I'm super proud of this hand, not just because of that emotional process or uh, the fact that I was able to zone out all the noise, but I think it's just a gangster call in such a big pot uh, to begin with. Now, I hope you really like this. Uh, next time we're moving on from High Six Poker, we're going to be showing my WSOP hands, uh, the, the five bluffs in a row video we're going to dissect. Um, and if you like this series, uh, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you had any questions or thoughts about this hand, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Don't bluff the guy in red. <laughs> that was an uncharacteristic play by Doyle. That's why the call by Lex is more impressive.